In this lecture, we're going to be talking about full wave rectifiers with capacitive filters. So similar for the example that we looked at for a half wave rectifier, we're going to place a capacitor in parallel with the output resistance. And this is going to help improve the output voltage because remember that capacitors oppose change in voltage. So let's go ahead and draw the circuit for this full wave rectifier. And I'm also going to draw the input voltage and the output voltage in a pair of axes. Now remember that for a full wave rectifier, what we're doing is we're flipping the negative part of the input voltage to make it positive at the output. So if this rectifier didn't have an output capacitor, then the output voltage would look like this. Essentially from zero to pi, it looks like the input voltage, but from pi to two pi, it looks like the inverse of the input voltage. And I've drawn this in dashes because what happens for the circuit is that from zero to pi over two, so let's define pi over two as this point right here, the capacitor at the output is being charged, so the output voltage looks like the input voltage. So we'll say that from here until about here, the output voltage looks just like the input voltage. Now similar to the example that we looked at for the half-wave rectifier, after pi over 2, because the input voltage is decreasing, the capacitor at the output holds the output voltage high. So the output voltage after pi over 2 looks like this. And it's going to repeat after that. So just like in the half-wave rectifier example with the capacitor filter that we looked at, let's define this point right here as T1. So after T1 until pi over 2, the capacitor is charging, so the output voltage looks like the input voltage. And then from pi over 2 until this point right here, which would be pi plus T1, the capacitor is discharging, so it's holding the output voltage higher than the input voltage. Now similar to the half-wave rectifier example that we looked at, the output voltage from T1 to pi over 2, so this part right here, is going to be of the form Vs sine omega t. So again, just like the input voltage. And then from pi over 2 to pi plus T1, so this part right here, it's going to be of the form e to the minus t over tau where tau is the time constant of the circuit, which is equal to RC. Now, as far as the output current, we know that I out is going to be equal to V out over R. So it's going to be of the same shape as the output voltage. So it's going to look like this. And we'll say that if the output voltage has a big magnitude of V, just like the input voltage, then the output current is going to have a peak magnitude, let's say this point right here, of V over R1. Now the amount of ripple on the output voltage, so the ripple would be from here to about here. So from this point to this point. It's going to be dependent on the size of capacitor C1. So the larger the capacitor is, the smaller that ripple is going to be. And again, that's due to the fact that remember that the current through a capacitor is given by IC equals C dv dt, which means that dv dt which remember that that's the rate of change of voltage with respect to time is going to be equal to I C over C. So the larger the capacitor, the lower the rate of change of voltage with respect to time is going to be, which means that the output voltage is going to decay more slowly, which would make the output ripple smaller. Okay, so now let's take a look at a numerical example, and I'm going to erase this to make some room. So just so that we can compare it to the halfway rectifier example, let's use the same numbers. So we're going to say that R1 is equal to 10 ohms and C1 is equal to 2 millifarads and Vn is going to be the usual 170 sine 377t volts. 
So now remember that the output voltage is the same as the input voltage for the positive part of the input voltage, but it's flipped for the negative part of the input voltage. So we can say that the output voltage from T1 to pi over 2 is going to be the absolute value of Vn. So we'll say that from T1 to pi over 2, V out is equal to the absolute value of 170 sine 377t. Now from pi over 2 to pi plus t1, the output voltage is going to be at the Kane exponential function whose peak magnitude is the same as the input voltage. So from pi over 2 to pi plus t1, v out is going to be equal to 170 e to the minus t minus 4.15 milliseconds over the time constant tau which is 0 0.02 so remember that tau is equal to rc which is equal to 10 times 2 milliferrets so 2 times 10 to the minus 3 which is equal to 0 0.02 now we have to convert these times from radians to seconds so remember that one cycle of a 60 hertz waveform so 2 pi is equal to 16.6 milliseconds which means that pi is equal to 8.3 milliseconds and pi over 2 is equal to 4.15 milliseconds so now let's plot the upward voltage again we'll say that this is one full cycle so 16.6 milliseconds so half a cycle, 8.3 milliseconds, and a quarter of a cycle, 4.15 milliseconds. So if we didn't have a capacitor here, the output voltage would look like this, where the peak magnitude would be 170 volts. But we know that the output voltage looks more like this, so it's decaying then same as the input voltage until pi over 2 then decaying exponential again and repeats again and let's call this point right here T1 and so we know that from T1 until 4.15 milliseconds so this part right here the output voltage is 170 sine 377T and from 4.15 milliseconds to 8.3 milliseconds plus T1 so this point right here the output voltage is 170 e to the minus T minus 4.15 milliseconds so again this is just like in the half wave rectifier example and we know that the 4.15 milliseconds and the exponential function comes from the fact that the the can exponential function doesn't start until pi over 2. So now just like in that example we can say that the two equations are going to be equal at this point right here. And so we can set them equal to each other and solve for t to see what t1 would be. So in other words if we say that the absolute value of 170 sine 377t is equal to 170 e to the minus t minus 4.15 milliseconds and t in these two equations is this point right here so we'll say that we're gonna let t equals 8.3 milliseconds plus t1 so again if we plug 8.3 milliseconds plus t1 in t here and here and then we'll solve for t1 we would get that t1 is equal to approximately 2.2 milliseconds and so now knowing that we can calculate the average of the output voltage and then we can compare that to the halfway rectifier example to see how we've improved the voltage by using a full wave rectifier instead of a halfway rectifier so let me raise some things here to make room to calculate those integrals
So we know that average V out is going to be equal to 1 over the period, so 1 over 16.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 3. And then we'll integrate V out for one cycle. So we have to pick two points. We're going to compute the first integral from T1 to 4.15 milliseconds. So from 2.2 .2 milliseconds to 4.15 milliseconds. So this point right here to this point right here. And then we're going to compute the second integral from that point until this point right here. So then we would say that the integral from 2.2 .2 milliseconds, and I'm just going to write milliseconds instead of 10 to the minus 3, to 4.15 milliseconds of 170 sine 377t dt plus the integral from 4.15 milliseconds to 8.3 milliseconds plus 2.2 .2 milliseconds, so 10.5 milliseconds of the decay exponential function. So of 170 e to the minus t minus 4.15 milliseconds over tau, so over 0.02. And I just noticed actually that I forgot to include the time constant on these two equations. So in here, this is over 0.02, so tau, and in here over 0.02. So now notice that I'm computing these two integrals from 2.2 .2 milliseconds to 10.5 milliseconds. So roughly from this point to this point right here. But that's only half of a 60 hertz waveform. Remember that the full period of a 60 hertz waveform goes until about 16.6 .6 milliseconds. And then we're starting to compute the integral from T1, which is 2.2 .2 milliseconds. So I would actually have to compute from 2.2 .2 milliseconds to 16.6 .6 milliseconds plus 2.2 .2 milliseconds. Or what I could do is instead do what I did. So compute the integral for this part right here only and then double it. So I'm going to say times 2 here at the end. So if you compute these two integrals, you will get that V out is equal to 0 0.869 of V in, which is 170 volt, which is equal to 147.35 volts. Now, just as a comparison, remember that for the half-wave rectifier, the average of the output voltage was approximately 125 volts. So we've improved the output voltage by more than 20 volts by using a full-wave rectifier with the same size capacitor as for the half-wave rectifier. So now we've taken a look at single-phase rectifiers, both half-wave and full-wave, and we've seen how we can use capacitors and inductors to improve the performance of rectifiers. So next, let's take a look at three-phase rectifiers.